Anjana, it's a pleasure to see you. Thanks for taking the time to chat with us today and share your story. Um, so let's just start there. Please go ahead and introduce yourself to everyone else here. Yeah, thank you, Riley, and thank you again for this opportunity to join all of you today. Um, so just by way of background, uh, I have about 25 plus years experience and uh, looking back on my career, I spent the early part uh, in consulting and have spent the rest of uh, the time in the industry leading technology teams across several Fortune 500 companies. And I'd say the common thread as I reflect back on those experiences, it's really about driving change and uh, driving transformation. I think that's kind of the common theme and thread that has uh, strung along all parts of my career. So maybe just with that background, let me hand it back to you, Riley. Yeah, of course, absolutely. Can you provide an overview of the role that digital strategies play in enhancing patient engagement within healthcare contexts? Sure, no, happy to. I'd say it's increasingly digital strategies are playing a significant role in patient engagement. Um, and as all of us, even if you're a patient, you're a consumer and as consumers, we're leveraging digital technology in all aspects of our lives. And so I think we've gotten accustomed to, which is good, in leveraging tools and kind of want to leverage the same types of tools for managing our health as well. Um, and managing health is pretty complex. So that's why a, a, a wide host of, I think, types of tools have come into play. And I think when I think about what are the needs of patients across this landscape, um, I think it's many. It's about getting easy access to health information, looking for convenience factors, how you manage all aspects of your health, um, whether it's playing the, paying the bill or scheduling or any of these aspects, kind of looking for tools um, and ways to understand your own health and kind of thinking about uh, personalized insights that will help you. So I think it's certainly a, a fantastic time when digital technology is really able to play a significant role. And if I have to sum up this opportunity, I would say, Riley, it's uh, in one word, I would say it's empowerment of the patient. I think that is the opportunity that digital technology has in continuing to enhance these patient engagement opportunities. Yeah, and speaking to those uh, you know, technologies and specifically the needs of the patients and the healthcare providers, what sort of evolution are you seeing in those digital tools and, and the technologies? How can they help to grow and advance to meet some of those needs that you've mentioned? Yeah, so I think if, when you take a step back and kind of look at the entire industry itself or healthcare industry, there's a lot of macro shifts that have had, taken place over the last several um, years. And I think uh, there's a few of these have already been touched upon by the previous speakers. It's value-based care, kind of focusing on outcomes. It's about patients picking up more of a, a cost burden, if you will, uh, which uh, starts to put more skin in the game in kind of thinking about where and how they want to manage their health. So a number of these macro shifts, I would say, Riley, are really um, helping to evolve the digital tools and kind of making sure the right tools are available to help uh, meet those needs of those uh, shifting um, needs of the patients, if you will. I was just looking up the other day, and when you go into an, a mobile store app or Apple store, there's about 350,000 apps when you look at the, the category of health and fitness. So just tells you the sheer amount. Now, many of those may not be exactly health, it may be fitness related, but just the overall uh, nature of kind of the number of apps that are there is just staggering when you think about it. And there's a whole host of examples, everything from EHR systems to telehealth has really made a pretty big evolution as it comes through uh, remote monitoring. So you can have better um, access to information, whether it's your uh, blood pressure monitor, whether it's your blood sugar, um, therapy related applications, um, as well as kind of things about your healthcare costs and billing systems, et cetera. Um, I think there's a whole host of evolution to meet those, those changing needs, if you will, um, across the ecosystem. Absolutely. Yeah, those are all great examples of how uh, the evolution of those digital strategies has occurred. And, uh, you know, I really love that, um, you know, empowering the patients and, and having that be a focus of those digital strategies. What are some of the ways that we can actively empower patients so that they can take a more, you know, centered role in managing their own health and wellness? Mm hmm. So I think the biggest advantage I would say, um, Riley, in digital technologies is gives access to information, uh, which is truly empowering. And as I said, puts more skin in the game to bringing in more accountability, being aware of one's own health and how do you manage it. Um, and I'll give you my own recent example. Um, I was recently had a little bit of uh, insulin resistance and I was trying to figure out how best to kind of manage my own health, what's the right dieting tools. And I was getting frustrated because nothing I did seemed to be working. And then I decided to use a, a continuous glucose monitor, which kind of tells you your blood sugar every time you eat, real time, it tells you information. And it was amazing as I went through just as, a, as my own example of kind of 
it was eye-opening as I kind of looked at every part of any food that I had and kind of real-time effect of, uh, that it had on blood sugar. And I think what was a very difficult thing to do or figure out the right diets, I could personalize and kind of think about how best do I um, fine-tune my own diet to kind of make the, meet the needs that I have. And so that's just one example of how digital tools can really empower a patient, provide the right information so that we can make the right choices, if you will. Um, and whether it's medical follow-ups and adherence is such a, uh, a big problem in the industry. So tools can help you uh, improve that adherence and kind of making sure that we uh, that patients kind of follow up on therapies, they take their medications. So there's a number of ways I think that empowerment can really be uh, bolstered by leveraging these tools. Yeah, I that's amazing. I really like that. And thanks for sharing your story. Um, you know, it, it also puts into mind that uh, as healthcare practitioners, we're not only treating a patient, but we're helping to educate a patient and teach a patient. And so I think it's important that, you know, these digital technologies and ever evolving um, solutions include that education piece uh, while also providing the access to information and um, everything that you just shared with us. So we've got all these great ideas. The landscape is evolving. Everything is improving. Uh, but what are some of the biggest challenges that you see to help keep the ball moving forward and help uh, this evolving landscape in these digital tools? I think one of the challenges I would say is um, similar to kind of it is a good thing as I talked about the number of apps that are out there, but it can, it's also overwhelming as you think about it as a patient. It can be lots of different information, helpful, but it's all fragmented and, and it's just a lot of information. So I think that's the biggest one I would say. And then when you look across our uh, healthcare ecosystem itself, lots of different information in different DHR systems, different um, hospital systems or providers that you go through. I think it's the fragmented nature of our entire landscape. I would say that is probably the biggest challenge that I see in overcoming and kind of simplifying it to help a patient. I think that is the, the, the most important. Currently, there's no single pane of glass to kind of look at the holistic health of a patient. Um, and the more we can all work together as, as part of an ecosystem to help pull all this together, that'll be great. Yeah, absolutely. Sometimes it feels like there's almost, you know, too many options for one person to choose from. And, and that can, you know, while we're trying to provide access, that can actually limit patients' abilities to find a, you know, the specific right solution for their need. Um, and speaking of providing these solutions from an, you know, educator and, and uh, thinking about the human touch of the solutions, how do you balance that between, you know, the digital technologies uh, versus comparing and adding in the human touch uh, so that you can really get those meaningful patient interactions? Yeah, that's a that's a great question. And I would say what's important is kind of having this sort of a omni-channel digital strategy that kind of helps you uh, both incorporate the digital channel, but also the human touch, which is so important, as you talked about. Um, it is so important to have that meaningful uh, interaction. So I think it's the, the kind of some of the things I think to keep in mind as you're designing the strategy is kind of making sure that you meet the patient where they want to be met. So sometimes it's the digital channel, sometimes it's the personal um, human touch. So kind of provide all of those options and meet the patient where they want to be. The other thing I would uh, recommend is kind of integrating all of this it, so that it becomes seamless. So regardless of where you come in, um, and, and this, of course, on the back end, uh, being a technologist, I know how critical but difficult it is sometimes to integrate all these various systems, but it's really important to kind of having an integrated solution to be able to help the, the patient. And the last one I would uh, maybe add to the considerations is kind of thinking about where do you need, where is the more complex interaction where a human touch is actually beneficial versus those where I just need simplicity of information and I want to be able to get, so kind of look at it from complexity to kind of think about how you want to design your omni-channel um, strategies to kind of bring the best of both digital as well as the human interaction, if you will. Yeah, that's excellent. And, and speaking to uh, the fast paced nature of technology and, and the need for the, all of these uh, different multi-channel, um, you know, connections to get feedback from the patients and help involve them in the journey. What can healthcare organizations do uh, to stay current, stay adaptable, and, you know, just meet the needs of this ever-growing landscape? Yeah, no, it, it is growing and growing very fast, which is exciting on one side, but as you said, you got to be able to keep up with it. Um, so I would say look at it as an ecosystem. Look at it as an ecosystem play where you can not only not have all the answers yourself, but are reaching out to other partners to be able to upstream and downstream within your own patient journey for you to be able to connect, understand how they're doing it so you can kind of keep up with it. Uh, partner with startups. 
there's a wealth of lots of startups with great ideas, and that gives you a fantastic way of keeping abreast of tools. Um, con uh, connect with all the thought partners and consulting partners um, to be able to bring some outside in thinking and also look outside the industry. Sometimes we just look at the healthcare industry because that's sort of where the patient is. There's so much we can actually learn and be inspired from with other in consumer engagements that may be happening in other industries and kind of bring that in. So I think there's a lot of different ways to kind of stay abreast and kind of think about what's the best way to kind of bring all of this um, to inform your strategy. That's excellent. Yeah, I really like that, you know, uh, cross collaboration and working together uh, from an organizational standpoint. And that flows all the way through to including the patient and, uh, you know, in centering along that human touch and empowering the patient as we um, develop these different solutions. I'm going to put you on the spot here a little bit. I want you to give me your most exciting possible digital strategy that's on the market or on your horizon or something that catches your eye in the digital health space. Yeah, and I think for me, if I think about sort of the future and what's exciting, I think it's really about the continued leverage of AI technologies. I think we've all been using it in different uh, forms. So it's nothing new to healthcare itself, but certainly a lot more that we can do to enhance patient engagement. So I'm really excited about generative AI to be able to engage with patients, especially maybe older patients, to be able to guide them through a very complex healthcare system that we have, um, to have integrated solutions that we were just talking about, to provide the holistic care for patients, and maybe to end on personalized care. I think that for me is the holy grail of sort of predictive insights to be able to guide a patient and hopefully improve care and prevent it before it actually happens. I think that is what excites me in the future as I look at where this can all go for, from here. Awesome. Well, thank you very much again. I know we had you for a Women's Health Tech Wednesday. We are lucky enough to get you again here for our symposium. Uh, it was great to connect with you and, and hear your thoughts. And uh, thank you again for taking the time to be with us today. Thank you so much.